Josh. Hey, Brad. Uh, Mark on hey, Saturday, I think. Uh, Mark on Saturday, I think it was Saturday at least, had uh, some nice things to say about those freshman linebackers. What, uh, you know, what are you seeing from those kids? Are they, you know, kind of how is that situation, you know, setting up there? I know Jaquez, it looked like he was out on Tuesday. I don't know if he's back or when you're kind of projecting him to be, you know, be able to be out there with that group. Yeah, you know what? They, they've they done some good things. You know, obviously there's there's a lot of defense they have to wade through. And so they're, they're still doing that. Um, but they're conscientious. They, the fun thing about it is they love ball. Uh, they take coaching. Obviously, Coach Summerall does a great job with uh, with those two. Um, and they, they've got a knack for finding the football. So they may be in a wrong gap, but they've they've just got a little uh, sneaky wiggle. You know, they can slide through a gap, find a ball carrier. They've got good strike on contact. Uh, but there's a lot to learn for them. So, you know, the big thing is not to heap too much on their shoulders too early. Uh, but I'm I'm encouraged by what I've seen. And, you know, looking forward to, to continuing here. We need every single practice we can in camp, you know, when you're talking about a freshman. Dick. Coach, you talked a lot about uh, the need to get to the quarterback, uh, do a better job at that this year. What have you seen in practice, if anything, that has made you optimistic about being better at that this year? Yeah, you know, I, I think that's that's hard a little bit uh, to tell at times in camp, you know, because you go against the same guys every day. So sometimes you get, you know, you get a little bit more of a tendency read. Uh, you've got an idea of what sort of the, the set period is uh, so you know how to rush. Um so I think it's hard to gauge, you know, there, there's some things, you know, I like what Jordan Wright's doing uh, right now, you know, as a rusher, obviously Josh Pascal, uh, I think is having a good camp, you know, but to, to say that, you know, we're going to have this, this thing flipped, you know, immediately and, and, you know, get, you know, three plus sacks a game. I, I'm not, I can't say that, you know, I, we'll see how it goes. Um, it kind of, it, it has that feel, you know, back from 19, you know, when, after we lost Josh and, you know, I think it's going to have to come from some, some different angles and I've got to do a, uh, a good job of putting guys in position to succeed, you know, create some one-on-one -on -one matchups, you know, try to get a free runner if we can, but when we get a one-on-one, -on -one, we've got to win it. And so, you know, I don't know if that truly answers your question I, that, I don't know. I, you know, that that's one that I'm still, I'm still out there. I, I'm not, uh, you know, crazy optimistic that it's, you know, we're going to have 30 some sacks, but you know, we've got pieces in place to, to be successful as a pass rush unit, but they've got to rush together. You know, when we run a blitz, they've got to run the pattern, right? Everybody's got to understand. And then at the end of the day too, the back end coverage has got to get sticky and, you know, because we, like I said, you know, I think Phil probably had three or four last year where we sit in the quarterback, but we just weren't sticky enough in the back end. So it, it takes all 11. You know, I know that the front gets the the brunt, you know, of that critique. Uh, but, you know, everybody's got to do their job, including the coaching staff. Thanks. Derek. Hey, Brad. Um... I guess, how do you feel at this point in camp about the depth across the defense? Uh, are, are you comfortable with it or still going to take some time to figure that out? Yeah. yeah. I, you know what? At, at certain spots, you probably feel better than others. I mean, and that's at any program across the country. And I feel okay. I mean, it's not overwhelmingly uh, – like, oh, yeah, we can lose anybody at any position and be just fine. Uh, you know, there, there are guys that play at a high level and, and, and at a higher level than others. And so you need to try to keep those guys. Um, but I do feel good about the fact that, hey, those next guys up have been dialed in. They're improving. They're getting better. They need to continue to get better to, be, to play at SEC, you know, winning football but 
they're coming to work every single day. And that's, that's all I can ask. They, I like the energy of this group. They, they, they attack meetings. They take good notes. Uh, they go out to practice. You know, there's only been maybe one or two practices where, you know, I felt a little bit of a lull and, you know, the, the staff, you know, had to help try to motivate that most times, you know, it's player led. So that's a positive. Um, and that's half the battle. So we, we need to continue to grind. You know, we're short in the dog days right now, the middle, as much as two days, or it's not even two days, whatever the, the training camp is these days. Um, and they just have to continue to push through. And, and before we know it, we're going to be two weeks out from game one. John Hale. Brad, maybe just because he's so steady, we don't talk about him as much, but Yusuf Corker has been such a big piece of this defense for a couple of years now. What do you kind of, what's your message to him for the next step for him to take this season? Really, it, it comes down to go be great because he has been really, 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 I don't know how many reallys I can make until it hits great, but it's like he's right on the cusp of, of, being a great, great player. Um, and he, I'm glad you brought him up because I, I don't think we've really talked about him, you know, through training camp. And he's one that, that people need not forget. Um, he, he's been Mr. Reliable for us over the last two years, made a ton of plays, uh, at, makes all the checks in the back end. Now it's a, go make those difference making plays, you know, game changing type plays. And uh, I've got to put them in some positions to, to let them go do that. You know, we've seen in the past, you know, that Mike Edwards that makes a game saving interception, makes a game saving, you know, strip sack or forced fumble, something like that. We need a, it's been awesome that he's been incredibly solid, reliable, uh, you named the, the positive adjective, that's Yusuf. But now we need to attach greatness to it. And if he can play at that level, then this defense can do something really special. Larry. Yeah, yeah Brett, on the, on the defensive front, have any of those y young linemen kind of jumped out at you and made the kind of step you were hoping for so far? Yeah, that's a great question, Larry. I, I've i been um, positive, you know, I, I, I've i been optimistic, uh, you know, about those two freshmen that we have. Um, and then obviously the sort of those, that 2020 group is all sort of made strides. And, you know, we've talked about, uh, you know, we've talked about Josiah and Trayvon, you know, and, and Sam in and, and that, that group. Uh, Justin Rogers, all, all sort of starting to come into their own. And they're going to find each find sort of a niche role because they're all a little bit sort of different and unique in their own way. Um, and then you, you throw in the mix, you know, a guy like uh, Khalil Saunders who comes in as a true freshman and he's got some length, you know, and he's got a little bit of twitch in his body, um, but he's, he's a young pup and he, and, you know, Jamarius, they, they both, they're what you look for. You know, you talk about, hey, when they step off the bus, people are like, okay, that's what an SEC defensive lineman looks like. But they have to figure out the speed and the pace and the strength. And the same things that those four, for better sense of word, redshirt freshmen, I know they got COVID years or whatever, but they had a feel, you know, um, in that 20 class, so. But I, I, as a group, as a group, I think they're doing a really good job. Coach Stewart, you know, hammers those guys on technique. Their technique is so much better. They're fundamentally sound so much better. Um, you know, so on. And, and, you know, we talk about Josh, but Marquan has been such a leader in that group. And he's pushing and demanding of those guys. Um, and so that's been good to see. What about a Bula? I, it, he's one that that's again, he's going to be a major factor for us. I did. I didn't include him in the young guys, you know, deal there, Larry, but Abula is going to have to be a major. He's a massive individual. You talk about, 
what there's, you know, when you look up and he's broad shoulders, um, he's starting to really understand what we're asking of those guys. I think early on it was very developmental for him uh, when he first got here and then over these last couple of years. Um, big thing with him, he just needs to continue to try to stay healthy. And if we can keep him healthy, he's a guy that that's going to help us. And that's, that's, if you, I know an earlier question, uh, I think Derek asked, you know, about depth, you know, that's one position, those guys up front that I feel like we can roll bodies and, you know, we're not going to lose all that much. Nick. Two of your cornerbacks last year might be starting week one in the NFL. Uh, how are the guys stepping in to replace them? And even more so the, the younger guys that, you know, haven't necessarily gotten those reps on Saturdays. Yeah, it's it's some trial by fire. You know, they, they're they, – they've – and especially going against the offense that we go against, you know, they're, they're, getting, they're getting stretched. Um, a lot of different route concepts. And, you know, so it's, it's going to make them better corners. Um, you know, it's forced them to have some short memories in practice. And that's good because you're going to have to have it on Saturday. So, um, obviously, it's nice to have a guy like said, you know, an older guy that's played in games that, that, can, that can help those guys along so they know what to expect. Um, you know, obviously, Quandre's played in games. Uh, but then you've, you know, younger guys like obviously Carrington um, and, and Andrew Phillips, you know, so those those four are going to have to they're going to have to help us all of them in some form or fashion. You know, if you're not a starter, you, you better train and, and prepare like a starter because they're going to they're going to be in the games. Jeff. Yeah, Brad, I was wondering if you could uh, talk about uh, Sam a little more and and, Lee and and his progress and what you've seen from him lately. Yeah, again, I think Sam is a little bit um, like how Abule was. I think he's farther along, you know, because for Sam, it, there was a little bit of, obviously, the position switch. Um, so to, to go from – playing sort of defensive end in high school. Then he played the year standing up at Jack and then uh, moving to that field end. You know, there, there's some some processing. And, and it's not like he's played football, you know, since he was three years old. So, but he, you talk about conscientious. He, he wants to do right. He studies. He knows which way to go. Um, but we have to get to the point where we just cut loose. You know, at times there's too much thinking and, especially when you've got a guy that's only six inches away from you, there's no time to think, you know, you can think pre-snap when the ball snap post-snap, it has to be violent hand strike strain. Right. And if you're thinking, what is my footwork? What is my step? Right. You're getting ear hold. So that's the process that he's going through. All those uh, young D linemen have had to sort of go through that. Um, and then, you know, the, the true freshman linemen are learning that right now. You better throw your hands quick because if you don't, all right, they're gonna, you're going to have two sets of hands on you in a heartbeat. All right, we got a couple more. John Wong. Brad, we haven't heard much from you regarding name, image, and likeness. I know Mark at the beginning said he was a little bit concerned about the distraction that it may cause. On the defensive side of the ball, uh, how much of a distraction has that been? Uh, that's a question for Coach, but for me, I haven't seen any distraction at all. Um, I haven't fielded any phone calls for me, so I guess I'm not that popular. Um, <laughs> But that's okay. But no, it, it hasn't affected us at all. The focus has been fantastic through camp. Um, and so, I, I mean, if, if it hadn't been out there, I wouldn't have known it. All right, Adam, and then we'll wrap up with Josh. Hey, Brad. Hey, Brad. With all those seniors and veterans, I guess you have on the defense, to this point in camp, do you feel like you're farther ahead um, than you were in the past? Or is it just kind of the same? Yeah, that's a, Adam, that's a, it's a unique question because I would say yes and no 
you know, <laughs> from the fact that, yes, I do feel like I can make certain tweaks uh, to certain things, almost game plan-ish type adjustments, um, you know, to, to get us ready or to, to try to combat what we're seeing in practice. The no piece being that they're facing a different style offense. And then when they go through their install, you know, it, it, it feels like there's a lot of coaching that, that you have to do to combat that offense. So, um, whereas some of the tweaks say in the past, if we were going against the same offense that we had the last several years, yeah, I would feel probably more ahead against that offense. I feel less ahead against our playing our offense, but more ahead from being able to game plan, adjust and mid flight adjust if that makes sense. All right, we'll wrap up with Josh. I'm curious just how it's been uh, bringing in Chris Collins and how he's, you know, ad adjusted to, you know, or how those guys have had to adjust maybe working with him opposed to, to Clink and, and also how, you know, are you recruiting differently? It, it kind of evaluating kind of what you want from that position. I mean, I know they've had a lot of success in that group, but, you know, I guess how do you look at that with a new guy at the, at the helm? Yeah, it, every coach that comes in brings a different personality. And Coach Collins fit right in uh, with how we teach. He's a phenomenal uh, communicator, uh, phenomenal teacher. Uh, you know, and that was a big thing for coach and myself, you know, when we were looking for that position and uh, the guys really respect him. Um, he, he comes with a lot of energy and passion. He he dove right in, you know, when it comes to recruiting, uh, you know, he, you know, I, I don't want to overstate, you know, what's going to happen there, but uh, he's going to do a great job for us there. And um He's he, he connects. He connects with our players. He connects with recruits. He connects with families. Um, again, it goes back to that communication, that ability to communicate. And at the end of the day, that's that's sort of our job as coaches, especially at, at, in the SEC. Hey, you've got to be able to communicate with your players and get it taught what needs to be taught. And you've got to be able to communicate to recruits in the recruiting and be able to show where they would fit in our system, how our system operates, what the vision, right, of both our program and where they fit in our program. And if you're a clear communicator, then I think UK can sell itself, you know, and, and he does that. He brings that uh, every day, uh, brings some great ideas. And so really excited to have Coach Collins, you know, obviously with Coach Buff back there, you know, we've got, you know, two guys uh, that can really communicate with our players. Obviously, Coach Stoops, uh, you know, being a DB guy, we all know the, the history around that. So I feel like they're, we're in great shape in the future. Um, our players are excited. Uh, you know, we've gotten a lot of balls uh, in, in camp so far. That's good. We need that. We need to continue to, to, to get our hands, tip balls, PBUs, interceptions, all those things. Uh, because that leads to to more opportunities for our offense to score. Um, I know I think that was the last question. I just want to say I appreciate you guys. I, I miss seeing all your faces. You know, hate doing this thing by Zoom, but we'll get you here some other time. <laughs>